the very unusual red and blue review. Welcome to you, each and every one of you, wherever you are watching in the world. Uh, this evening, my name is Nick Philpott. As, as always, I'm your host, and I will be joined, and I have been joined by Lord Oliok. Je Jezza, good evening, man. Jezza. Jezza. <laughs> you all right? I'm all right, man. How are you? Yeah, just a little tiny bit stressed with what's going on. In the yeah, local, in the in globally. the world globally, even in the, you know, I was, just, I was even reading something on the New Addington chat a minute ago. People out there are up in arms because they're you know people. Yeah, are always up in arms. Had it and fucking all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is Ian with us? Can you see Ian? Jill, I can see him. I'm here. Oh, no, I can't. I'm, I'm here. Good evening, Phil. I can see Phil Usher. Welcome to the Red and Blue Review, Phil. I hope you're well. Uh, Lucy, guess what? I can't see him again. But there you go, usual stuff. So we have got a busy show. Uh, obviously, we don't have a match to review, but my God, have we got something to talk about. Uh, before, we get, we, before we kick off this evening's show, uh, we will be talking to you about different bits and pieces, obviously to do with the coronavirus of COVID-19. We are not. We are not medical experts. So please don't ask us any questions along those lines. We're not. The only thing I can say to you, and Joe would probably reiterate here, Wash your hands and wash them properly. Um, anyway, so we will be discussing the all the details and the ramifications from the fallout from the Premier League's postponement of all matches until April the fourth at the uh, earliest. Even Graham Kitcher. Uh, and before we get into that, if you are watching us live, and as there's going to be many of you that are, uh, if you are watching us live, can you do something for me right now, please? Right, right now, before we get into the show. Can you please push the share button on the, on the Facebook on your Facebook page now? Push share, and once you've hit share button, hit the watch party button. Uh, because what you can do from that is you can invite as many people on your own private page to come and join us. If you know, if they're Palace fans, great. Even if they're not Palace fans, give them a, ask them to come and join us. Uh, we've got. Uh, oh, I've just read your message behind you, Jill. It just made me chuckle as I was reading that. <laughs> Stop being greedy. So-and-so's, yeah, okay. Uh, plus, we'll get into, I've got loads of wide-ranging questions. The questions crew have been at it all week this week. Uh, there's plenty to talk about. We've got lots to get in. But don't forget where you can find us, even if you're not watching this live, you can find us on Twitter, YouTube, Big Heads Media at any time to either watch, listen, or download any of our podcasts. Or ask your Alexa digital player, play the latest Red and Blue Review podcast, or simply go to Red and Blue Review .co.uk for all the links to this show and all of our previous shows. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a conversation. Hey, Jill, let's have a conversation. We are the only podcast you can watch. Hello, mate. Let's get into it. Um, I can't see my man. Is my man with us? Yeah, he is. I'm here. Yeah. Ian, yeah. I'm here. Hello, mate. I hope can you're you well. Uh, thank you for joining us, although I can't see you. Lucy, I can't see him. Don't know if you can drop him out, but we're going to carry on. Uh, Ian is there. Okay. Ian, I'm going to start. Uh, Joe, I'm going to start off with you. First of all, let's do the shopping mania. The shopping mania out there. Okay. Um, I'm sure you've got thoughts on the shopping hell. Give me your thoughts before we get into the FA statement and the Palaces statement. It's, uh, just, it's just a ridiculous state of affairs. People are just literally being greedy. Do you know, my... Um, my next door neighbour, she's seventy-seven, just been diagnosed with uh, with cancer, and had her first chemo the other day. Now she needs more cleaning stuff than the most. Yeah, and her daughter's come down from, from up there for for a week, and I, I know there's not enough stuff in the house to keep to keep her as clean as she needs to be. You know, yeah, it's um. It's really, it's a real shame. You know, we had uh, two weeks ago. We had the, you know, be, you know, be nice to each other or whatever it was. The, the hashtag, and now everyone's just being a complete cock um, and being completely selfish. I, I, I don't understand it. I mean, this is just, you know, it's a you, you see stuff and you go, oh, it restores your faith in, you know, humanity, and then you just see. I mean, the worst, absolute worst case scenario. Is that is that we have to stay indoors for for two or three weeks? Um, 
I, I just think we should be limited now. I just think if you do an online shop, you should be limited. I mean, you go into a shop, you should be, you know, just rations now. It literally is because there are people, genuine people out there that, that need, uh, that need stuff, and uh, and the greedy, I just, I just, you know, just nicking it all because they can. But anyway, um, we're. All, I mean, I've actually had messages in our in private chat, Joe. People genuinely worried about you. Could you reassure them and open your fridge door, let them know you've got plenty of milk? Because the nation is concerned about you and your milk ration. Have you got plenty? Don't, don't worry about that. You know, I've got plenty, it's plenty of milk in the fridge. You've got fight. plenty of milk in. <laughs> you actually want to see. Jeez. Show me. Uh, uh, there's four. There's another four. And then there's another four. Sitting on a side. Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, so when we actually uh, have to self-isolate Jill Holyoke, okay, but rest assured that he is well looked after. Uh, he's, he's got plenty of stuff in the, in the house. And please have a thought, not for him self-isolating, but for on, Lisa, his on, wife. Let's get on. Okay. Is, has he joined us yet? Is he there? Uh, he's not, no. But I'll tell you what we will do. He, let's, uh, go on, mate. Let's, let's just go straight into... Um, Hello, please, yeah. Yeah, let me just go, just just find, uh, just give a load of a, so uh, Phil Usher, John Knox, uh, Neil Chatterjee, Jason Green, Karen Kitcher, Luke Cooper, Max Francis, Graham O'Neill, uh, Jordan O'Day, John Limes, Mark Easton, Andrew Adams, Luke Cooper, uh, what we got here, Angie Jordan, Michael Montgomery, uh, Bruno Broniecki, Nigel Crouch, and Thomas Curley. Uh, Ian Hughes, Vicky Usher, um, uh, another Usher, John, yeah, John Donahue, uh, Mark Corbett, Daniel Garlic. Oh, there's just tons of people out there. Jonathan Cook, uh, and John's asking why no masks? Or well, in our own houses, you wallet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm self isolating in the kitchen. She's locked the door, and I see I can't get out. Andy, Stacey, Theresa Baker, Ben Wayne. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just uh, just having a little flip through, uh, and again, Tim Richards, Mark Bushel. So I think I pretty much got my, a lot of you. Okay, uh, well, I'll, and, and Paul I'll, Gruber. I'll, I'll and pick up on we'll a do, couple of those. We'll do some more after. Yeah, I want to pick up on Mickey Phil as I can say. Good, right, good, good evening to each and every one of you. I know you're watching worldwide. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I know you're missing your football. We're going to do a bit of Palace, but we are going to do a bit of COVID nineteen. I keep thinking with COVID nineteen, I expect to hear the words. Bright nil come after it, but it's not. It's a bit more serious than that. Um, it's, uh, I need to, a couple of people I'm talking to out there. Uh, Teresa Baker, if you're listening, I know you are. Um, are you popping on for five minutes for the medical angle? You're very welcome to do so. And a very special mention this evening to Lee Lockwood, who's not on there this evening because he got booted from Facebook today. So I said to him, I'll give him a special. He's one of my questions, crew. Lee. I know you're going to be picking this up on the uh, podcast. Uh, Alan, mate, welcome to the show. Shame you couldn't be with us live, but thank you for all your input on, on the questions, Crow. Right, following a meeting of shareholders, it, it was unanimously decided to suspend the Premier League uh, with the intention of returning on the 4th of April. Yeah, right. Subject to medical advice and conditions at that time. Premier League Chief Executive Richard Masters said, above all, we wish Mikel Arteta and Callum Hudson Adoy recoveries and everybody else that is affected by COVID-19. In this unprecedented situation, and it is unprecedented, we are working closely with the clubs, government, the FA and EFL to reassure everyone that the health and welfare of the players, staff and supporters is our top priority. Despite the challenges, it's the Premier League's aim and to reschedule these displaced fixtures, and better mind this was written on Thursday, and a lot ha has happened since then, including the academy sides, when it is safe to do so. Ian, good evening, Mark. I'll see you now. In this fast-moving environment, uh, further updates will be provided when appropriate. For clarity, this is a Palace statement, of course. For, pal uh, for clarity, all under-18s, under-23s, Crystal Palace women's fixtures have been suspended until, I think these are the telling words, at least the 4th of April. Any supporters that have bought tickets for away matches at Bournemouth uh, 
or against Liverpool on the 21st of March should retain their tickets and await further information from the club. We will update with specific details about these matches as soon as we have them. So somebody actually asked that question. We'll kick off there. Somebody actually asked that question in the chat, actually on Red and Blue News during the week. What do I do about my tickets that I bought? Keep them, keep them, keep them is the advice. Ian, hello, mate. Welcome to the show. How are you? Yeah, no, not too bad. Thanks. Sorry about that. I was uh, a little late. I was just uh, the cat needed put into bed. Oh, I thought you were saying I could say put him down. I could say that was a bit harsh. Well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> give it time. <laughs> so, is there. So, give me your early thoughts on the announcement, Ian, please, if you'd be so kind. I'd just like to know just a, a quick resume of what you think. Is it the right move and all that sort of stuff? Let me know what you think. Well, with regards to the ban, the suspension. Yeah. The suspension. Yeah, well, I just think it's. Um, I think it would have been hard to justify why uh, every all the other countries in Europe and across the world are, are not doing any sport or not playing any sport, and then we suddenly think that we can. Um, I think it's well, oh, clearly it's more of a cautionary measure, but then you've got people in clubs like Leicester and Chelsea that are apparently showing the signs, showing symptoms, uh, or actually have the uh, the virus so it makes perfect sense i mean these are uncharted waters aren't they it's unprecedented times i think the last time anything like this happened or a country went into lockdown like this uh, there were uh, uh the, the luftwaffe were coming over here weren't they so yeah i think it's a sensible move joe your initial thoughts mate before we get into the bits and pieces yeah no it's anything that's going to stop people getting uh you know being deathly ill um you know, there's, there's there's a lot of older older the older generation still got a football, so if they're going to be uh, put into into mortal danger, then we might as well cancel it. So I, I, I mean, I said to my wife, you know, that it's although it's it's very serious, and people are asking how, how serious is it because you, you, you listen to this person say something, and then you know, literally a few hours later, someone else says, and and for me, it, I mean, it's a serious situation, but the only the only way that for me, the only way it can get worse is if, if it's an older 15, 16 year old start going over. And if that happens, then we're all in trouble because, they, you know, they're fighting fit, or their hormones are getting mad, their body's getting stronger, you know, fitness, and they're all, they should at 15, 16, they should be, you know, they should be very, very well. Um, so as long as they're not, uh, as long as the kids are not going over, then, then I think we're. I think we're sort of getting there, but I mean, this self-isolating business. I, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, does anyone does anyone know if you can get it? Is it airborne? I mean, I, I'm am, I'm just amazed that it's it, droplet born, isn't it? Second, it's droplet born. Droplet. That's why there's this like three feet rule and meter rule, isn't there? So just in case, right. so it's airborne to a certain extent, but um, you pretty much pick it up from touching surfaces, which is why there's such, I mean, I'd be sitting here touching my face and like, that's exactly what I shouldn't be doing. But it's so hard because, you know, you've gone 40 odd years doing it and all of a sudden you're How told many? not to do it. How many years? Uh, sorry, I don't know for that, sorry. 40 odd, I said, 40 odd. Uh, uh, and the reality this is, year, mate, because, it's, well, that's it's, another thing. Oh, like, yeah. Going, going on to that, you know, slightly taking us down a personal route, I've got so many things lined up. I'm supposed to be abroad in two weeks, got a cruise booked and all this sort of stuff, and all of that currently is on hold. So, you know, it, it's affecting everyone in different ways. And, and just as importantly, I know we're here to talk about football, and, you know, these are all well-played people that will be able to get by, and I'm sure, I'm sure they'll get paid as well. But people that are really going to struggle with this, even if they don't get get the actual illness themselves are the ones that can't work. Great. I'm glad you came on to that because I'm coming on to a couple of bits of that. And before I do, I just want to, Joe, if you don't mind, I just want to big up and put football rivalries to one side for a minute, OK? Because Ian's just raised a great point about people not being able to work. And I want to say a big up to Brighton and Hove Albion. Yeah, you heard it from me, folks. In case you don't know what I'm about to say, just to let you know that the majority of the people that work to uh, most football clubs on a match day are on zero contract hours, okay? You don't work, you don't get paid. 
Brighton Hove Albion are the only club to have announced publicly that during this uh, troubled times, they are going to pay their staff even though they're not working. And so rivalries to one side, hats off to Brighton Hove Albion. You know, I think the, the other, certainly the other Premier League clubs should be following suit and maybe taking a leaf out of their book. Um, and on the subjects of working, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going straight into questions from the audience, okay, because one of them is from Chris Brandrick. Chris, thank you for your question today. Uh, and I think it's, this is absolutely relevant, lads. Um, I work in the sports industry. We have been demolished by this... Um, so, sorry, sports event industry. We have been demolished by this virus. Many other industries will be massively affected. Affected Globally, we face hard financial times ahead. My question, next season's season tickets are due to be on sale soon. Surely the club have to, have to suspend this uh, as many people will be worried about their own financial situation and cannot afford to commit right now in this current climate. Jill. Your thoughts on that question, please. You know, I mean, if, the, if everything's been put back two, three, four, five weeks, then then football has to go back with it. Everything, the the infrastructure has to go back with it. I mean, I mean, you you would be crazy to turn around and and put yourself in. You know, if you buy your tickets through direct debits and, and you've got you know more than one, that you might not have any work. You know, you got you got to pay deposits. I mean, I say you got you got five. So you know, it's a uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's just a, you know, if, if you can't afford to buy something, then don't buy it. But but if the club has started, you know, I mean, the club won't force hands here. This is, you're either going to, you know, you're either going to buy them now or you're going to wait. But the club should just do the, the sensible thing and just go back where football's being pushed back. Put yeah, the whole of the infrastructure. I mean, football's infrastructure is now being pushed back. I mean, already, you know, if we go back a month, at least that gives the players what do they get off they get off two months so that gives them a month's break if we turn around and say that the football season is going to start next year at the same time it isn't you know there's all championships and and, and everything it, everything will just impinge on it, it, you know it's just a uh, a domino effect and you know if we can just nick back i, I don't know a week a year then it might take four or five years to get back to normal. Or we can have these highly paid athletes just having four weeks off and, and the game turns into a proper squad game where, you know, for where you've got to use your whole squad. But anyway, for the for the, inf the infrastructure side of it, if if, if the if the football if everything doesn't get pushed back, then uh then it's just it's just absolutely ridiculous. So I just really what Ben's put on the screen. Ben Allen said the league cannot go beyond the 30th of June due mm. to players' contracts ending on that date and mainly having a pre sign free contract arrangements to move to other clubs in the closed season. Uh, players also become free agents and will not be registered and insured to play. All really relative, Ben. Really good points as well. However, they're, you know, they can be extended by short term, like loan moves or short term contracts to cover this and as Ian's already said twice on the show and it'll be a word that we use numerous times this evening these are unprecedented times and whilst your points are right right Ben things some things are going to have to move the goalposts will have to move in some areas um, Ian your thoughts on the uh season ticket issue please. yeah I mean just going back to what Ben's saying I mean it's uh, he's just highlighted beautifully what um what a fine line the whole system treads. And when there's something that throws it out of kilter, the knock-on effects and issues that obviously become apparent. Um, season tickets obviously being one of them. Now, clearly, I don't. I think that I can't see any club announcing season tickets until they know what's going to happen, going to be happening with the rest of the season, uh, which I know that we've had a number of questions uh, on them probably move on to later on. But um, so, so, yeah, so, Chris, in order to answer your question, I don't think that the clubs will uh, will mention anything about season tickets, re release them on the same dates that they were talking about releasing them until it's clear as to how the current situation and the season is actually going to pan out. OK, and so, boys, my next question to you is not a question from the audience, but it's a general question. Where do you think... 
the league will end up? What will happen now um, with regards to a the remaining whatever it is nine fixtures, uh, the title race, the relegation? Because we're going to come on to the Karen Brady bit in a minute as well. Okay, Joe. What in fact, Ian? I'll start with you. Where, where do you think the the, the uh, Premier League will go with this now? Well, I think and, indeed, and and indeed the other leagues, of course. It clear it clearly is dependent on how quickly we get over this situation currently. If it's two, three weeks situation there, you know, and we start seeing cases falling and everything else, then there's still a case to say that they can play the games behind behind closed doors. If there's a technology there to allow all season ticket holders to, to get access to uh, streams for the games for the time being. Um, so we wouldn't necessarily miss out. Uh, as to where I think it's going to go, I don't know. I'd like to see it played out. I think Karen Brady yeah. is only saying what she's saying because clearly the situation her club's in. And if there's anything other than the full season played out and the game's actually played, then someone there there are not everyone's going to be happy. There are going to be some that are going to be happy with the decisions, and some that are not going to be happy with decisions because they're all going to be affected differently. Teams at the top will be affected differently to teams at the bottom. And also no, the championship. What happens there? I know that uh, you know, and we'll probably come on to that later as well. But. Uh, uh, look, and Theresa Baker's just said this isn't going away for, uh, anytime soon. Joe, your your thoughts. Much the same as what Ian's, you know, Ian's pretty much covered it all. I can't see, and and and, uh, and also what uh, what Theresa's just said. I, can, I I don't know. I can't see. Um, I can't see this being all sorted out in four weeks. I really can't. We have too many international, uh, too many international players. People just come in that have come in from around the world at different times. Um, you know, if you're going to isolate, you know, one player, that player might have just been with. You know, the, 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 everything just is just a uh, a knock-on effect, and the knock-on effect is, you know, is is catastrophic. But it, you know, the other thing is, it's only football. It, it literally is only football. So uh, if they if they really want to, we can find solutions in in, in everything. But you know, I don't think they'll cancel the season. I think the ramifications, the financial ramifications for teams coming up, teams going down, the positions of where teams are now. You know, I mean, imagine the Scousers would just completely freak out if they turn around and just been the, the But how funny team. would that be? How funny would that be? Though? It would be mildly amusing, wouldn't it? It, it, it would. It really would be. Um, but, yeah, I mean, on the, on the other side of it, you know, the people are, rightly so, people are, you know, their own uh, theories on things of, of current form and, and stuff like that, which means that we, we, we will win the Premier League this year, I think, because we're the only ones that have won yeah, the last I three games. That. Yeah, I saw that. So, right. But no, I mean, Laurie's... I I, I, I think that the only way, if if they, this this would be my thing, if they work out the average, if we cannot feasibly finish this season, work out the average points, the average goals, the average everything. I, that's exactly what I was saying earlier. I've got now. Oh, sorry, I, I, I wasn't listening to you. No, sorry. no, no. Sorry, sorry. Not on the show. I was saying that to someone earlier. <laughs> oh, okay. I was thinking exactly out, yeah. the same. And then just and then and then have to do that. And maybe if there was a god and someone did, you know, then Brighton would go down. Oh, good, but that. <laughs> well, a certain Mickey right. Philpot said everyone will be happy if Brighton and Watford went down, and we just called it that. And I think, yeah, again, I think that'd be mildly, uh, mildly amusing, wouldn't it? Yeah. My, idea of fo- my, my idea of football pong, that is, I'm telling you, carry on. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, obviously, for the, for the teams coming up, you know, the teams coming up from the Championship into the Premier League, I, I, I really don't, I really don't know. I mean, whatever the outcome, the, the season, I, I think, has to be, has to be finished. And if it doesn't, I mean, if it doesn't, I can't see it being cancelled. I think they will just. They literally will just work out. I think the only fair thing is is work out the average, and then and then and then leave it at that. Um, See, I like that, Joe, and the reason I like that is because it's it's uh, it's a reflection on the season. Exactly that, but also because different teams have got different runnings. 
they could be ta- either taking, but see, obviously we'll be playing a lot of the teams at the top. So if we've got um, a points average of what, I don't know, 1.2 or whatever a game, then I'll take that, playing Man City, playing Liverpool and everything else, and we could end up in Europe. So someone like West Ham, we've still got to play a lot of, uh, play a lot of the teams at the top. So that could then help them out. But then other teams are playing a lot of teams, at the, uh, you know, in and around them. So it, it will be really interesting as to how that would actually pan out. I but they've got, to, they've got to complete and finish finish the league. You're right. Even if they, they you know, start next season, if you like, or start in August, uh, finishing off the games and then sort it out down the line. Sorry. Oh, you just said that. No, it's all right. Joe, go, go on, mate. I've got something to cover in a minute. Go on, Joe. No, just what we just discussed then. I wonder, has anyone done that? Has anyone done that? And, and uh, I might do it later, actually. Yeah. On the, on the internet, I, mean, I imagine well, one of the we, one of the bookies will, will do it. They'll get their statos on it, and and then we'll see see a reflection of of, of what could be. I mean, the thing is, this is what I, again I discuss with my wife, and it's not an epidemic anymore; it's a pandemic, and that just completely changes. You know, it changes everything worldwide, and I think what we need to do is put things into perspective: is that football. When it comes to pandemics, he's a pretty poor 50th down the list, I imagine. Do you know what I mean? People and, are more worried and, about and, 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 alive. Tim, and, Tim, and Tim Richards has just highlighted that uh, this week was the one-year anniversary of the uh, horrific uh, loss of life in that massacre in Christchurch in New Zealand. And the uh, anniversary uh, remembrance stuff had to be cancelled. So... Uh, you, and you're right to highlight that, Tim. Um, go on, here before I move on. Uh, Michelle Colinette, she's just asked a, a really good question, actually. What do they do in the seasons that the World War started? I'm not entirely... You'll, you'll know this, Nick. Surely you were around, weren't you? What was happening? Say that again. What was the question about? What, about what did they do in the seasons that the World Wars started? Well, they didn't. That was why I think it's Huddersfield won the, won the FA Cup. They did they what? They won it for four years because they didn't, they didn't play football. No, 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 no. I knew that. Yeah, they suspended it for four years. You're right. During the World War. In fact, women played football for a lot of the teams during the war. But what did they do in the seasons that the World War started in? Well, it was only okay. three games in, in World War II was suspended. So, okay, so that's great, brilliant. That's, see, this is great, isn't it? That's, there you great. go, Michelle. There's your answer. Great. Cheers, Great. Great. Right, okay, I'm going to move on, boys, if you don't mind, because uh, Laura, Laurie Scott said something in the chat a minute a minute ago about um, it needs to have 14 clubs to uh, ratify any change in rules or any decisions made this Thursday. Okay, and I'm just going to put a little bit of meat on that, Bones, uh, Laurie, because you're right to a point. Every Premier League club and other European leagues will have a preferred choice to deal with this extraordinary uh, situation. An enhanced 22-team Premier League next season could put further strain on already con- congested fixture calendar. We can expect to see more ideas and options in the coming days. The Premier League will want to avoid a public spat between the clubs. It prefers its decisions to be unanimous, as, it's deciding to, uh, as it was when it decided to suspend all games until April the 4th at the earliest. If disagreements persist... Two thirds of the clubs. And this is where your four, fourteen clubs comes in. That was me. Sorry. Two thirds of the clubs, i.e., fourteen, are required to agree any constitutional change. But it remains to be seen if there is any appetite from the players and clubs to play on into the summer, especially because the coronavirus infection is expected to build to a peak in the UK in May or June. Now. I'll just, again, I'm just going to clarify what I just said about May and June. Now, I don't know if any of you were watching the BBC News the other day, and if you weren't, they were showing a side-by-side uh, chart on the screen. Now, imagine the, this is the line where it started, you know, when Italy first had it three weeks ago, and it was a really low level, OK? Then uh, three weeks later, as we all know, it's done that, OK? We are currently in the same low level as Italy was, and our peak is yet to come. There was an initial talk about two and three weeks when it's going to come. I think the 
the, the new thinking is it's actually May and June as when its peak's going to be, okay? And then as the weather changes, the contraction of a, any sort of virus normally wanes in the better weather. So it's actually going to get an awful lot worse. And the April the 4th deadline, the current April, in my mind, is an absolute fallacy. And there is no way it's going to it's going to uh, go on at that point. I've asked you to your thoughts. Okay, I'm actually going to give you mine as well. I know you haven't asked for it, but I am going to give you my thoughts. My own personal opinion is that it will get cancelled. Okay, the season becomes the 2019-2020 season will just get wiped out of the history books. Nobody will, nobody will win it. Nobody will get relegated. Okay, the only exception to those rules will be West Brom and Leeds will get promoted and they will have an enhanced Premier League next season. That's I can't see any other fair way. Okay, That's and not even fair, how, much... how, can, okay. how can you promote someone on the basis of two thirds of a season and not relegate someone on the basis of two thirds of the season? That's bonkers. Well, the, the reality is there's going to be people. Oh, uh, uh, so Les Fuller's out, out in there. Les, look after yourself out there, mate. I know France are having a, a tough time of it. Sending you much love from Red and Blue Review, buddy. Um, yeah, no, and, and that's, the whole, that's the whole point, Ian. There is going to be three or four clubs, whatever the scenario they come up with, and I think mine will be the one that they go with. Okay, whatever club, and I don't know, of course, I mean, nobody does, but whatever clubs decide to do, there's going to be three or four clubs that don't, aren't happy with it. There'll be one of them, okay, will start uh, legal proceedings at the end of it. I guarantee you. Because yeah. they're not happy no with it. Yeah. Look, I'll, tell you that, I'll tell you who that'll be. And I'll, even, I'll put, no, 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 it won't be. Because West Ham will stay up. West Ham will stay up. I'll tell you who it will be. It'll be Fulham. Fulham currently sitting in third place in the championship are prime candidates still to go up. Or they, you could say they're favourite to go up through the playoffs. And it'll be West Brom and Leeds come up automatically. And, Fulham won't be getting promoted and they will be the ones that start um, legal proceedings. Let's have a look at it in three months' time. See if Phil Pot's talking his usual brand of bullshit. Okay, but I bet I'm right. <laughs> Jill? <laughs> Jill? Any thoughts? I'll bet, I'll bet you're right. Say again, you make, it, you make me right, did you say? I said I bet you're right. What? I'm what not that? arguing that? with you. <laughs> What, am, I a bit, am I a bit passionate about it? I bet, I bet you, I bet you the next curry that we have, yeah, that you're wrong. Okay, now what's not right? Look at, can anyway, anybody read that for me? No, go on, so Jim. Robert Best said it's it's my belief the UK will going to shut down during the Easter two weeks as a lot of businesses are closed and staff on holiday, and it's a four day break. I can't see any football being played until and after then, if at all. So, you know, where are you I reading mean, that from, mate? It, Sorry, where are you reading that? I'm, from? I'm reading this off, off, the, off, the, out of uh, out the chat. So, my, uh, Mark Mark Bynes, it, uh, it's that or pandemic usually in there. Uh, so, a, a theory if it's cancelled, the international fees are huge, and that would leave a massive uh, deficit for teams like Palace if we if uh, if we pay out, but the league doesn't. So. Uh, um, Matty Cannon said the only answer for this uh, is is to leak, is to leak forward games uh, uh, to make sure that they're played behind closed doors. It's a massive shame, but no way the government going to backtrack after a few weeks and suddenly say let's all get back. Um, I mean, I can't see that anyway because you're talking. I, I don't know how many what we got. So eighteen teams times twenty five. The players, the back, the backroom staff, everyone, the transport. The, the, this you're talking again. You're talking about thousands of people moving about. The other thing as well is, is you know, if you're um, if you're a Man City fan and you live in London and you know they're coming down to West Ham and they're driving past your house, there's no way you're going to say go behind the wing, open the curtains, darling, and then give it away. If you're going to be outside on the pavement, it just won't be. You know, I, 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 I yeah, I feel that this is that we are going to see law changes and stuff you know it's all it's all got a little bit it's all got a little bit futuristic it says for me um and, and be because popular, we have, and, well, and, and because we have a government that literally don't 
just where they're just completely inept in in coming out and talking and letting everyone know to stop panics and, and, and you know it's just it, it's it's an endless you know we're worried about football and we should be worried about whether we you know whether we're going to be able to eat so <laughs> Um, I just want to highlight what Jason Green said. Hello, Jason. I hope you're right, buddy. Uh, we have already, we've already had a winter break. So, but if they cancel next year's Euro, Euros, and this is a really valid point, this will be the only other way that my point won't happen. So we've already had a winter break. If they cancel next year's Euros, which they will do, by the way, do you not think that they could extend the Premiership season going into June yeah. and then start in 2021, uh, a season later, uh, and then cancel next year's winter break to make up the time, which is probably what he's alluding to. And I think that's probably, that would be my second choice. My first choice, of course, because I ate, I ate Liverpool, uh, is to cancel the season completely. Uh, Ian, on Jason's point, please. Yeah, it's pretty much what I said in my answer originally, wasn't it? Is that I can see them maybe uh, finishing off this, the, the 1920 season in the start of the 2021 season and going through. But the Euros is another issue, obviously, um, and as we were saying, based on what Ben had started the conversation on earlier, is it's the knock-on effect. They're trying to fit so much in. They can cancel the cup competitions to give us extra extra weeks and fixtures, so even though it is a little late in the day now. Um, the Euro Championships, you've got the option of doing it next summer or even over the winter, towards the end of the period, uh, to, you know, towards the end of the... Uh, and on that point, Ian, November, Ian, on that time. point... Uh, there will also be the African Cup of Nations then. So a lot of our, a lot of the first team players will be away then anyway, and the rest of them will be playing in the Euro Championship. Exactly. But next good, season, good suggestion. I, I think what they'll do is next season, they will just get rid of at least one of the Cups, if not both of the Cups, to allow the fixture lists, because that takes up a good... If you, It depends on how far you go in the, in the actual uh, the Cups themselves. But it takes at least four, four weeks out of it. Joe? Jill? Well, Graham O'Neill said cricket uses the Duckworth Lewis uh, uh, theory. So, could football adopt this? Greg said that earlier on here. Greg, 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 Greg asked, Greg asked yeah. the same question earlier. Good question, oh, yeah. guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, so so Greg is, Greg is also saying maybe scrap the playoffs and only promote the teams in the automatic spaces. I, I think there are plenty of options other than to cancel the season. No. I don't think I cancel the season, but I do. Th I do think the tournaments, that the, the tournaments will be cancelled. I mean, I just can't see the point in in you know. This is a. You never. You know, I mean, you never know. I mean, oh, I don't know. It's the, the ramifications of everything. Of you know, no matter what you do, someone is not going to be happy. Someone's going to get a lawyer. You know, you get this lawyer, yeah. the better lawyer, unless you play the games. Unless you play the games, exactly. I can't but see... not behind closed doors, but not behind no, closed doors. No, no, to no, me, that... you can't. There's no point. It's literally no point. If you've got players out and about, thousands of players and the support staff... And the... But, I mean, the thing is, you're saying about that, who opens the ground? Who turns the floodlights on? Who's, you know, it's just... It goes on and on and on. So... It's uh, I, I, I don't think... I, I just think... Yeah, there's, there is another thing as well... Um, I, I was watching on the uh, someone's posted a video on Twitter about how China are fighting this infection, and they are literally disinfecting everything: the drains, the streets, every house on the outside. And you're expected to do your own house, but I, I, I haven't seen uh, um, fighting in supermarkets where they're fighting over uh, over cleaning agents and stuff. You know, it's a uh, but uh, we we just need to we just need to to um, try and think about things logically. That's what I think. Ian, there's, Ian, there's a message on screen. Do you want to refer to that? Yeah, that's why I, I almost burst out laughing. Um, <laughs> Nigel, I'm sure he will be. That's all I'll say. Uh, there is a reason the words Alan Brazil and next Curry Night are on screen, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I'm too much of a gentleman to go on to it. Mark Lyons has said, with no sport. I'm really not sure what to do with on a weekend. I was down in the pub watching Norwegian biathlon today uh, and what it's worth getting into it. Truly desperate times. Uh, well, the, the, and, go on, go on, well yeah. what surprised me was that didn't the whole KR have a game yesterday? I think it was today. Or, or, how, how is that still going ahead when everything else is in lockdown? 
I mean, my sister went all the way over to Australia to watch the Grand Prix, <laughs> you know, and then that got cancelled. You know, everything is being shut down. And now yeah. that's still going and on. Forget, it's crazy. And, and, and that's and the reality. Contact. And the reality, Great Britain, is we haven't even got there yet, OK? You have got freedom of movement, complete freedom of movement at the moment. And the only thing you are restricted on is you tra travel abroad, OK? Wait until we go into lockdown. Because uh, like every other nation like or in Europe, they've gone into lockdown. We will be next. We will be next, OK? And I'll tell you now, within a fortnight from now, we will be, you know, your transport system will be closed down and everything else. Jill, gone. So Michelle Collins uh, has come up with a valid point. She said maybe diff it might be difficult with the Euros, being that they're all over the all over the place this time. So loads of different co uh, countries hosting. Some countries may not be in a position to host when you have a multinational, to you know, a, a single tournament with multinational, um, you know, uh, games taking place in different countries. So yeah, I mean, it's just. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, Theresa Baker said Euros be delayed by a year and then I will have to fit the World Cup qualifiers. I think they'll cancel the, the, the Euros. I think they, I think they have so to. I. I think literally think they have to. If it goes more than four it. weeks, if it goes more than four weeks, then, you know. I think they'll, they'll postpone it. I don't think they'll cancel it. Well, I mean, she just come back. Joe, she just come. She just come back and said, "Let's wait and see what happens on Tuesday." Theresa, it's not Tuesday; it's Thursday. The meeting, uh, the uh, discussions start on Tuesday, but the it's Thursday will be uh, when they, when we know what's going on. Boys, question for you: Steve Chandler says, "Oh no, the other one, one other quick point that somebody just made. I think Ben made it earlier. Uh, Will Zaha was seen uh, playing a, a five-a-side kickabout with his mates in goals." somewhere, um, whether it's Beckenham or somewhere. Um, wise move, club be happy about that? Uh, mixing with his friends outside, potentially picking up any sort of germs and diseases? Uh, is that the right thing to do, Ian? Uh, probably not the most uh, sensible thing to do. Um, you know, if he were to catch anything as a result of uh, uh, doing something like that, I've no doubt the club will have uh, something to say about it. But it's done now, isn't it? So it's a bit late. I think it, what it will do is it will it will raise that um, the prospect of uh, stopping any any other players trying to do something similar. Joe, just to let you know, there's a question on screen. Uh, Phil, Phil English, you just said anybody with Sky. Sky Sports subscriptions should freeze their payments. Now, I wouldn't recommend that to anybody, uh, but I certainly would be asking them worth asking Sky or Virgin the question with reference to no live sports on TV. Well, they're still right, providing they? content, though, aren't they? Jill? Well, Sky sent me a letter. Uh, I don't know if I had it in here. Just a, yesterday I got it saying they're putting my bill up. Fuck you. <laughs> That'll be gone soon. Oh, seriously. Yeah, if they, well, I'll get less and less football. I get, you know, whatever I did. Less than a football on Sky Sports, and they're charging me more money. So we got Trees has just come back and said, uh, Will Sahar, he's young, fit, and healthy, unlikely to be a problem. In, in yeah, but he in could still age. turn his ankle. Yeah. And uh, and her opinion, and Theresa, your opinion is valid, by the way. Um, new Steve Chandler writes News are saying that the over 70s are to self isolate for months. If this is right, who takes over from Roy? Uh, and if it does start again, is it Lewington, Dougie or Freeman? Sorry, Louis Derry or Freeman? Jill, take your hat. you're not allowed to touch your face, by the way. I thought he was crying. Yeah. Uh, I was face palming. Quite literally, there'll be a dispensation order one there, you know, just to, just to be out so you'll be able to, to be with a team or whatever. You know, and Chris um, Brander, Chris Brander actually answered him, Jill, by saying, "Well, at least the guy can still carry on doing the show." I think he's, I think he's alluding to the fact that he thinks we might be over seventy. Chris Brander, find yourself formally blocked on the page, been from Red and Blue Review. Okay, that's twice today, Brander. You know it. I like this okay. Chris Blake. He's a good lad, isn't he? He's a good lad. I love him. I love him. He's got. So, you got any thoughts on that uh, about the over seventies thing, Ian? At me, um... yeah. Well, I don't think Lewington will be taken over for him because he's got to be close close to uh, that age himself. So I could, something I, I could certainly say, uh, certainly see uh, Freeman 
being part of the, the setup if that were to happen, I would be surprised if there wouldn't be a certain dispensation for for managers or, or Roy in this particular instance. Uh, I mean, he doesn't, as to my knowledge, have any uh, respiratory problems or anything along those lines. So um, at least he's uh, got a fighting chance. But, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Okay, I have got a name here. And before I re read this name out for the next question, boys, I apologise to the owner of this name. <laughs> and I'm, here, here we go. Dale Nye Kepi Kepi Corti. That's Dale Nye Kepi Kepi Corti. Good evening, mate, wherever you are in the world. Do we reckon that this is the end of the pre-season tour to Australia? Ian? Uh, it could be, couldn't it? Uh, again, but when we're talking pre-season tour, what's that? Early July, isn't it? Yeah. So April, May, June, July. So it's only 16 weeks, which is which sounds crazy in itself, doesn't it? 16 weeks. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think there's going to be much going on other than uh, trying to catch up with uh, lost games. Do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, spare a thought for people like Grant Saunders and all that have already booked flights, booked hotel accommodation. Uh, they can't book match tickets yet because they're not available. But a lot of Palace fans, and bear in mind, this is a Palace show, not just a COVID-19 show. They, they already have uh, spare a thought for them. What's your thoughts on it? Do you want to go ahead? Well, I mean, most people have got insurance and these were books of a little while ago before, you know, countries were start getting locked down. So, um, I'm pretty sure that, I mean, my daughter's just, she's had to cancel a trip to Italy in May. She's got insurance, so they're getting paid out. Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah, of course, no one wants No, she's not. Uh, not. No, she's not, Jill. Not through travel insurance, she's not. Okay, let me just put, uh, clarify what I've just said. Uh, unless they've got the absolute expensive top tier travel insurance, COVID-19 is not covered because it's a pre-existing complaint. The only way she's going to get her money back Fortunately, she's paid on a Visa card or debit card, and she can do it through the Visa claim back. And I was listening to that on LBC only last night. She got her money back yeah. today. Huh? She got her money back today. What, on her Visa card? Oh, well, I don't know how she paid for it. But anyway, she, she I'm just saying it. She wouldn't that's have got, was, that's she wouldn't, like coming that's back. That's what I'm saying. She wouldn't, have got it back on, she wouldn't have got it back from her insurance company today, would she? Not on a Sunday. <clears throat> She's got, an e on visa card. she's got an email to say that she's getting her money back today. She got an email. Ian, you're about, Ian, Ian, you're about to say something. Well, yeah, because yeah, really I'd heard something slightly different. I'd heard that they were, if you'd already booked it, you would get your money back. But clearly, that's why um, a lot of the insurance companies were stopping their policies and stopping people taking them out because it is now a pre existing condition. After the yeah. 13th of March. Yeah. Well, her, her holiday. Yeah, and that's she. She got her. She something about the second of March, or after the second of March, whatever it was. It was the second or the thirteenth. But anyway, we're arguing about a, a, a moot point. But I mean, it is going to be unfortunate. But I'm pretty sure that. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Will it, will it still be going in six months, eight months? I really don't know. Well Joanna Donoghue, and, and I haven't read this question, guys, so it doesn't actually look correct, but I'm going to ask you the question anyway. Joanna Donoghue is saying, assuming we get through this and start next season sometime in August, from our current league position and continuous length in the Premier League, shouldn't we now be to pull out all the stops for a trophy or a European slot? We are as good, if not better, squad than Swansea, Wolves, Leicester. It's about time. Should we be uh, aiming for something a little bit higher than just above the relegation put spaces in? For next season? Um, yeah, yeah, you've always got to look forward. You can, uh, you know, it, we've been, we've spoken about this many times, haven't we, in the, the, the previous months about uh, what the squad is capable of and what it can be capable of. I think a lot, of, a lot of it is down to the way that we play, the formations are set up and therefore... Uh, we're probably not as adventurous as some of the players uh, we've got in the team um, could actually uh, could actually show. I think we've got the squad. Uh, whether we've got the management that will allow us to unleash that uh, creativity uh, to actually push us that step further up, I don't know. 
but yeah, you've got to go for it. You, 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 everyone starts the, the first day of the season in the same position with nothing. Um, so we've got as much chance as everyone else has at the start of the season. So why not? You got any thoughts on that, Joe? Are we aiming? Are we aiming for mid-table mediocrity too much, or should we be pushing a bit higher? Well, I mean, we had, you know, what what many people said was one of our best teams ever. So, um, I thought, I thought, that, you know, when when we when we really get going, we're we're a match for anyone. Um, we've just been set up so defensive this season that it's stifled. Um, it's just it's just stifled our attacking play. I think if we'd have been able to just carry on playing much in the same vein as as what we have been in the last three weeks and and also at certain ages before we went on that ridiculously long, you know that we won three and nineteen or whatever it was. Um, before that, we were we were doing you know we were okay. So ah, uh, uh, we we got such a decent squad, but I I, I now feel that. If we do, I didn't think we was going to start this year. That was my that was my thing on that. When we were on that, um, we were on that big, you know, that nineteen game, three wins in nineteen. I thought, but that's that's it because yeah. we've got a bit of a horrendous running. Um, but you know, we we've managed to pull some results out of the bag. I'd, I'd just like to see us, like I said before, our, our best for me, our best form of defence is, is is attack and uh and I thought we could have we really really could have had a, a better season but then we've had our best season you know we're coming up for our best season not in the top flight because obviously we finished third before but uh you know I mean I know football didn't really exist before the Premier League but but you know it's uh I don't know I I, I, I feel we could have done a little bit better Okay, you know, I'm just coming to you now. Andrew Adams said in the uh, chat, no football match to talk about and 100 people, over 100 people viewing tonight. Well done, everyone. The show it just shows that we are absolutely passionate about our football club. So, yeah, absolutely right, Andrew. Thank you for wherever you are watching in the world. We are very grateful. Please tell your friends, Ian, you were about to respond to what Joe was well, just saying. Yeah, I was just going to add to it, not, uh, you know, because I think... As we were saying, uh, you know, and Joanna's quite right in it when she's saying, should we be thinking about it? Yes, we should. But in order to get there, we have to strengthen the squad, certainly up front. Um, and then you have the problem about once you're there, how you don't let it affect the following year's season. Because the number of teams that have found themselves in even the Europa places have really, really tailed off towards the end of the season and struggled, and um, and it's caused them problems. So it's, careful what you wish for. Yeah. yeah, getting there is one thing. Staying there and then trying to fight on two fronts is something completely different. Right. Oh. Okay. Um, sorry, Joe. You, this is what you were about to say, Joe? Like wolves. Like wolves. Yeah. Well, uh, no, he's wolves, bit, no wolves, he's saying that they're the antithesis. Uh, but they are, they are they are a case in point that next year. We don't know where they, but where they will be. That's what, and that, I think that's what Ian's actually alluding to. I mean, they may all struggle. They only need to lose one or two of their better players. Well, no, I think what Joe's saying is that they're doing it now. They're doing all right. They're <laughs> doing all right now, it, but, it, and, but they're, they're, they're tail off next year. That's, that, well, that's exactly I was talk, yeah, I was talking. Yeah, I was talking more about this. If we were to get into Europe, that's it. You know, we we'd have to give it our all in the competition, but you can't do it. Uh, you know, at the uh, the risk of losing focus of the Premier League. But Wolves, Wolves currently are one of the few teams in the last 10 seasons to have actually done a decent job. Right, they, okay. they I want to change the better squad than we've got. I want to change the subject a little bit now and move, move a little way and, and just do a couple of general ones, if you don't mind. Um, I want to mention somebody in particular, particular George Wagwu. George, good evening, mate. Massive congratulations to, on your... Super thread that you created in uh, on Red and Blue News yesterday. Last time I looked, it had 165 comments in it. Mate, you are to be congratulated and well done. And the question very simply was, gentlemen, Tucson or Michi? Michi or Tucson? Um, who who would you have? Who would you favour return? 
Okay, um, George writes, it would be an interesting to get the panel's thoughts on the poll. And I added with the coronavirus in full swing and get Ian and Jill's take on how the Premier League will finish. Is it best for them to scrap the league and just go, give Liverpool the title? No, 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 Jill, go. I was just going to answer the, the, the uh, Chent Tosin or, or Batshuayi question. Yes, yes, please. Batshuayi, I'd have him. But... We, we, him, and oh, I'd like to. I'd like if we get him. I hope that might be the the catalyst to keep Wilf. Yeah, because they were very good together. Um, otherwise, we're going to go backwards, and we'll be asking uh, Jordan Ayew to supply to be a winger. <laughs> so, you know, it might be a step forward, get a lot of money, and then go backwards. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I I'd, I'd like Batshuayi. You know, we said it. I mean. It's, He's not the most massively proven scorer, but you know he has. He has. He definitely has what it what it takes. So, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, out in Facebook land, Batshuayi or two song. Ian, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something at you. Uh, Jeng two song. We only saw him a couple of times. Is it fair to call Batshuayi over uh, two song now? Yeah, because without we only a doubt. A couple of times? Without a doubt, we've seen both, haven't we? And Batshuayi is by far and away a better striker. He's also a lot younger. He's about six years younger, isn't he? Twenty-four. So, mm. I, you know, I, and that's more than valid. I, yeah, absolutely. I agree with Joel in that um, it would probably be uh, a Philip for uh, Wilf as well. I might might put a fire under him that is uh, certainly being blown out this um, this season. Uh, I might give him that little bit of impetus to start getting some bloody crosses in. But we'll wait and see. We got to get him first, haven't we? So. Gel, John Knox has just said, what about them both? Could you see that as a, a, a workable strike, folks? No. Andros on one side, Wilf on the other side, and no two up top? Yeah, but the, but the thing is, it's it's quite clear that Andros doesn't, like Max, doesn't seem to be part of Roy's plans. Of I think what it is, is, I mean, Andros, I've, I've had a proper think about this uh, over the last couple of weeks, and I think Go on, mate. Andros is pretty crap at defending. I think he's an offensive player. He's not, he's not, he's not very good at getting back. He, he's proved that he, you know, that he has a little job back. Um, and I think Roy wants, if you could choose Andros over attacking and defending, or you could choose, uh, MacArthur box to box all this for 90 minutes. I think he's going to choose, he's going to choose MacArthur. McCarthy's playing all right, and so is Cuarte. So there's your three defensive midfielders, or two defensive midfielders, and then you can stick Luca into the into the mix. So you know, for me, he's sacrificing an attacking player, either that or he really don't fancy him. And there's only that's the only two options I can think of. I have properly thought about this. So, um, well, on the on the on the thing on the on the thing about the squad, mate. I've actually prepared a load of stuff here to do the squad. But what I've decided we're going to do with that is we'll hold that as we as we're void of football over the next couple of weeks. We'll do another show in it uh, shortly uh, when we when we've got something else to talk about. But we'll do the squad potential player of the seasons and all that sort of stuff. Uh, another show. I've got a fun fact for you, boys. Okay, a fun fact. Ready? Jordan Ayew, two point five million pounds tops, probably less than that, but it was 2.5 million quid, has scored more Premier League goals than, ready for this, Felipe Anderson, 35 million, Manuel Lanzini, 11 million, Mikel Antonio, 8.5 million, Pablo Fornells, 24 million, and Gerard Bowen, 22 million, combined this season. 2.5 million for eight goals for Jordan, and a hundred and... 100.5 million for six goals for all the others. Go, Jill. He scored more Premier League goals than Messi as well, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a long question. Fun <laughs> fact of the week from Jill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such a happy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I'm not worried about it. I mean, Anderson, he looks to be a one season wonder anyway. I mean, when he came over, he was absolutely fantastic. And I think he's had. Very, very little to uh, to boast about. The players are, you know, I'm, I'm saying about players, Paul McNamara has just come up and he says, I still have Antonio. 
yeah, I don't know. I'm not too sure about that. Uh, and Laurie Scott said, but not as many as Serloff. Um, Ian, talk to everybody about Karen and Brady, please. Oh, I can't. It's before the watershed. Actually, in one minute's time, that was not. Uh, oh, God. Oh, yeah, it's just gone over. Well, it's gone over. There you go. Well, uh, have you got the bleep machine lady. ready? <laughs> go um, for it. What a self serving, self righteous, uh, pompous. Stuck up. Yes. In, Johnny Tiger. Individual. Um, I, clearly, she, she's only saying it for effect. She's, she's only saying it um, probably firmly tongue in cheek. Um, but. You can understand why she said what she said. She all she's trying to do is trying to plant the seed, isn't it? Isn't she? With yeah, for the benefit of the people that didn't see what we're talking about, just give them give them a rough idea of what she was saying. Well, she's saying that there shouldn't be any relegation from the Premier League, but that's I wonder why. Clearly, because uh, her, her clubs threatened with uh, threatened uh, more threatened by it than uh, than the majority of the teams in the in the Premier League. Uh, and can you imagine if they went down? How that financially would cripple them. <laughs> it really would. And as Gerald's alluded to, they spend money hand over fist to, to poach players from other teams in and around them, Bowen being one of them. I mean, Gerald, he, he mentioned that Anderson, when we went uh, to their place, Gerald and I both went uh, to their place for the 3-1, three, three was it 3-1? Um, yeah. Anderson tore us a new one. Is it 2-1? He certainly scored two oh, goals. Oh. 3-2, sorry, of course, yeah. Um, certainly scored two goals, but he, he, uh, he played fantastic that day. But since then, 60 million, that's crazy money. So, yeah, so, uh, I mean, it could happen to a better, well, it could happen to a, uh, a better club, but only one more. Jill? Uh, well, we're talking about, um, about Karen Brady and uh, Paul Glantz over there in Spain. Um, he said... Oh, so, Paul. He said that uh, I would... <laughs> um, what? What relegating Paul? What are you actually alluding to, mate? <laughs> he's got cabin he fever do... at the minute, anyway. And Benny Dawn. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I was going to say he, he's only saying he would because he can't get out. Have you seen he's him? Uh, and he's not got his punch of repair kit. Have you seen? <laughs> have you seen the video he posted on Facebook? I don't know if any of you have read no. no. Facebook. Well, there's uh, a lot of motors driving about where he lives in Benidorm. Um because everyone's on lockdown, all told to stay indoors and 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 got uh, you know public service announcements driving about saying do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. It's actually quite scary. Like I said, it's all a little bit futuristic, a little bit um, I don't know, just just very very weird. Uh, slightly so, different from the slightly different from the Milan video that I saw when they were in lockdown. But Andrew Adams, it's not just need to go go on to this because this is quite. Uh, if, if Tony Bloom said this, uh, it said the Brighton chairman said yeah. relegation and the top two of the championship come in to make it a large Premier League and then get four relegated the following season. And why so, is he saying it? Wasn't that? It, See, this it, is, it wasn't it, Tony Bloom, it was the barber. It was barber, whatever he said. <clears throat> okay, well, whatever. He said the Brighton chairman, so we, who's Tony Bloom? But anyway, but I remember, and, and I'm sure a lot of older Palace fans remember this, I can only remember the Premier League relegating four teams once. They only relegated four teams one season. And who was that full team? And we were that full team. Who was that full team? team? We who were was that full team, team, ladies and gentlemen. 49, 49 points, 46 we points, down, we went down to 49 points. Yeah, no, you know, ridiculous. Uh, uh, that was, that, oh, God, that haunted me, that game. But then again, I mean, if it, even if this Brighton guy did say it, that's two teams threatened with relegation saying, no, no relegation this year. No, I think that'd be unfair if there were people relegated. Surprise, surprise. Alex, if you weren't at the bottom of the table, you'd be saying cause something completely different. If they were if they were in with a chance in the European the mm. European spots, they'd be saying, No, we need to play games. So uh, And Theresa Baker's just said in the chat, and I am mindful of this as well, boys. Um absolute lockdown. I wish, not in my industry. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, please spare a thought for everybody working in the health, our wonderful health service. They're doing a cracking job. They were already working to capacity before they even start, before COVID-19 even came to the planet. Okay, and now they're being expected to do each and every day working over and above capacity. God bless each and every one of you lovely people in our health service. And just yes. as importantly, social care as well. Let's not forget social care. They're the ones that aren't being funded properly, social care. 
Well, again, again, Ian, you've raised a really good point because don't forget with people not being able to work and all that, you know, there's other people out there at home. Gel's already alluded to the elderly. Okay, There's other people, including people suffering from lots of mental health issues, who have got issues. Ask the question, are you okay? And then when you've done it, guess what? Ask them again, are you okay? Is there anything I can do to help? Is there anything you need? Do you want us to go around and pick up a bit of shop before you? What do you need? Crystal Palace family, at a time like this, come together, please. Yeah, Ian. Good night, no, that's very good. Nick, is there anything you need from the shops? You're right. Do you need spat his milk out there? <laughs> do, you, do you need any toilet roll? Uh, no, no he, he talks enough shit as he is. Uh, Andrew Adams wrote, right, <laughs> shut your mouth, Joe, you cashew flies. <laughs> 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 this is what I wanted for tonight, boys. Joe Andrew Adams writes, Nick, he said, is everyone at the club un currently under an NDA? We, I was just thinking it would be great, while we've got no football, to have people like Dean Davenport come on to the show, to the show and talk about women, women's football. I think that's okay. a great shout. Yeah, but, there you go. But we know from experience of trying to get people on the show, even players that have left, that they've signed NDAs and that they're so worried that we're going to pin them down. And some of these, um, some of these people we've said, look, what we want to do is talk about your career. You know, we don't want to talk about any, any behind the scenes gossip, but what's because we understand that you may have an NDA, but they just won't do it for some reason. It's, it's quite bizarre. So I've no doubt that they've got NDAs all over the place, but we can ask the question, can't we? So. Joe and I have actually got a hotline. Are we Joe to that particular individual? Uh, yeah, in fact, I was uh, on Twitter uh, talking to, to him today because obviously Dean was the person that gave me or gave us. We went down and met him, and he gave us that the full kit for me to take out to uh, out to um, Cape Verde and give to Kiki Rush's football school. So yeah, I posted a couple of pictures on uh, on Twitter today. First one was. You know, there's a guy called Elliot uh, um, who's taken a bit of sh taken a bit of shit as it was not stick from from certain factions of Palace and, and and other people about his daughter came home and she's being bullied at school for wearing a Palace shirt, and I thought, you know what, you know, it's, it's, it's not very nice bullying anyway, but just for, for wearing a Palace shirt, so I put that picture of that little girl up wearing that. You I'm know, sorry, the first I'm one sorry, that asked me for a picture was that little girl wearing that wearing the kit. So I hope that he shows her that and it cheers her up. But, Good. Um, well but done, yeah, man. I mean, Dean, Dean's art's in the right place. And, uh, and you know that Nick, we've met him, met him a, you know, a few times now. And uh, he, he's a good bloke. Uh, and, you know, they, they always try and help where they can. Um, maybe, you know, it's, it's the lower echelons of the club that can do stuff more than the, more than the, you know, the higher end. Um, and just going on that as well about, you know, if we're going to add a little bit of cheer, is that uh, Patrick Van Arnold saw that tweet as well. Someone got Patrick involved in it. I think he, someone tried to get Parrish involved in it. It didn't happen. And then Patrick Van Arnold was turned around and invited the, he said when everything gets sorted out and the football gets up and going, that he's invited the family down because obviously Elliot can't afford to bring his, Fantastic. his family down for a game. So I think PVA is going to sort that out for him. So, uh, well done, yeah. Right, so, yeah. A, a couple of little quickies before I sign up. Okay, I'll sign off. Uh, Graham Kitcher and Nigel Crowther, uh, you, you're both you've both been looked after this week by our lovely um National Health Service. So, wishing you a speedy recovery, both of you. Uh, they're both part of my questions crew, and uh, I hope you're both well, mate, lads, and then get back on your feet very quickly. So I need to do some quick sign-offs, if you don't mind. A massive thank you to the other following for their continued support. John Lyons, as always, Graham Kitcher, Kevin Lyons, Tom Clark, Samuel. We haven't used your images tonight, mate, but there's a reason for that. We're going to do it on another show. Uh, it's your support that helps us get through the show on a weekly basis, as well as plan for the future. And boy, have we got some plans for the future. Hey, Ian, that we're not going to talk about tonight. We'll do that another time. No, um, we're working maybe... behind the scenes. Yeah, definitely. We're working on it. And, uh, and some working harder than others. Mr. Lyons, you're brilliant at what you do. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. OK, if anyone else would like to join our growing numbers, simply support us or contact us here at Redenbury Review. Contact each and any one of us. Uh, 
And I think we, I think I've got to come. I've got to cover next week's game coming up next Saturday. At three o'clock kickoff. We've got um, oh, Ian's words. Nothing. 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 Nothing coming up at all. So we've got nothing coming up at all. But that doesn't mean we won't be around. I'm not saying we're going to do a show weekly because we probably won't. Uh, but if we've got, we've got some good stuff to talk about, some good content to talk about, we will come back on and do some reviews. If there's something you want us to cover in particular, let us know through the usual, you know, through the chats. We, we read each and every message. Yeah, we do. Because this is a show. I was talking to one of the guys, uh, you know, without you, this show is nothing. This is a show of non-posh Palace fans talking to proper, ordinary Palace supporters. We, we don't look down on others. We want your input. That is what forms a part of this show. Um, Joe, final thoughts on lack of football, lack of anything going on. Last words from you, mate. Go metal detecting and be nice. He didn't, did he? he tell me he didn't just do that. <laughs> tell me he didn't just do that. Ian Lyons from your... <laughs> <laughs> Ian Lyons, last words from you. Um, yeah, just generally, just be nice people, you know, and look after one another, isn't it quite right that you said, you know, now is, now's the time where communities really uh, grow in strength and, uh, you know, if you've got neighbours that uh, just need checking in on or whatever, it, just do it, okay? It doesn't take five minutes and you'll probably find these are people you've not spoken to in years in the first place and you'll find that they're real human beings with real personalities there as well. So, yeah, just stay Absolutely. safe and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. And I'll finish off by saying, ladies and gentlemen, if you're out in public and you need to sneeze, sneeze into a tissue, not into your hands, sneeze into a tissue, please. then bin it, and then please wash your hands. That's all I'm saying. Wash your hands 20 times a day. I'm Nick Philpott. Is Je- Ian Lyons. Is Jell Olio. We love you all. On behalf of everybody at Red and Blue Review, good night, everybody. God bless. Take care and stay safe. Good night, gang.